Hello people, my name is Kevin. Thank you for joining me. Normally, I'm posting videos of me watching and reacting to movies and shows like Everything Everywhere All at Once, Your Name, and Invincible. But today, I'd like to do something just a little bit different. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Sorry, had to do that. I love Avatar The Last Airbender. Nine years ago, this thing happened to me while I was in high school. Crazy stuff, right? Craziest part to me is actually that this t-shirt still somehow fits me. Yes, that really is me. And it's been nine years since that dance battle happened. And considering today is the anniversary of that, I've decided I'm gonna make a little video explaining everything that happened that day and everything that happened afterward. So this is the story of the viral dance battle that changed my life, impacted my life. Here's the story of this funny thing that happened to me. Let's start with the day this went down. It was July 11th, 2015. Vine was in its prime. I was excited about seeing Jurassic World in theaters that weekend. And Obama was still in the White House with no golden escalator in sight. It was the last day of classes of my sophomore year in high school. And I remember we all had to clean out our lockers that day. And I had a really, really heavy backpack and I had all my textbooks and everything. If it isn't obvious by now I was a complete nerd and still am a complete nerd. So there was this writing workshop on writing college essays. It was going to be held at the writing center. So I gathered my bag and all my books and I went to the writing center and I put my stuff down outside the door and I waited. And as I'm waiting there, I hear someone passing by. I'm not sure who say the words flash mob. And because I love dancing so much, I put down my bag and my books and I follow where she's headed toward the cafeteria and I'm super, super excited to see some people dance and you know, a little bit jealous that I hadn't been invited in on this plot, in this conspiracy. And when I got there, I saw that there was no conspiracy. I'm not gonna call it that. And I see this big crowd of people and in the middle of it are my friends, Josh, Tajir, and Justin. I'll point them out in the video here. And they're just goofing off a little, dancing a bit, cracking some jokes, I think. It's not a flash mob. It's just, you know, us high schoolers having a little bit of fun on the last day of classes. So they see me and they pull me into the middle of the crowd and all the other people start clapping out a little beat. You can hear it in the video. There's a little bit of a chant happening at some point, I think, if I can, if I can recall correctly. And Josh and Tajir start dancing at me and I dance back at them. I was just improvising the entire thing. It's not like I had choreography put together for this or something. If I did, that'd be a different story. And so Josh does his thing, and then I do that whole like body wave into this cool leg trick. It's a move I think it's called threading the needle, and the crowd freaks out a lot, of course, which, you know, is caught on film. I do need to take a sec to shout out my old friend Tim for taking this video because, I mean, come on, let's face it. I may have done the dancing, but almost no one outside that cafeteria would have seen it if not for you, so, Thank you, man, I really appreciate you. Anyway, about a minute or so after that, our principal, Mr. De Janeiro, has to come and break it up because the buses had arrived. And uh, he actually seemed a little bit, he seemed to enjoy what we were doing and he seemed reluctant to put an end to it. And then I'm headed to the writing center for the college essay workshop and I pass by a friend who wasn't there at the cafeteria, they weren't in that crowd. And I think it was my friend Andy? but I might be misremembering. Andy, if you're seeing this, fact check me on that. And he says something like, did I miss something? And I just tell him, you'll probably see it on Snapchat. Damn, Snapchat was a bigger deal back in those days. Should I have gone on Snapchat? <sighs> Getting distracted. So I go to the writing center, I get all the tips on writing college essays like I planned. I get on the bus a few hours later to go home. And, uh, and this is, after the dance battle and everything, after the event, I'm not gonna call that, sorry. And by the time I got home, the video had been retweeted by Worldstar and a bunch of other people, and it had already started to go viral. I had messages from like seven different friends just 
totally freaking out about it. People saying like, holy crap, Kevin, look at this, this is going crazy. And uh, yeah, that's how it kind of, how the virality of it started. I remember there was actually a really funny moment where one of my brothers tried to send a tweet of the video to my mother. But the thing is the text of the tweet said something like, it, oh, I can't remember exactly what it said. It said, he killed him. And my mother was really nervous to open the link because she was kind of scared about what she would see. Like if you're just seeing the text of that, you don't really think dance battle. It took a lot of convincing to get her to actually watch it, to actually click on the link. And so I had my phone blowing up that entire day with people who were just freaking out about it, which people saying, oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing ever, Kevin. Wow, you're awesome. And yeah, that felt really good. And so that was the day of. So this dance battle led to a lot of interesting things. One of the first things I was asked to do was be on Good Morning America, you know, the morning show. Uh, not The Morning Show, that's a show on Apple TV. I was asked to be on Good Morning America. I was gonna be interviewed by uh, one of the hosts, Michael Strahan, and we'd made arrangements with my school to you know, reschedule when I would take my final exams. This was during very close to the end of the semester. And my principal was even, he was super supportive about it. He even announced it um, on the school's Twitter feed so that everybody could, you know, could record it, keep an eye out for it if they got up early enough to see my interview. Hmm, I just realized something. Twitter really was involved a lot in this major event in my life, like more so than I thought of before now. There's really were better days. Unfortunately, they ended up canceling, which of course I totally understand, you know, shit happens. I can't remember specifically why they canceled, but you know, whatever. I did still get to meet the hosts and I got an autographed uh, football jersey from Michael Strahan. Actually meeting the guy, actually meeting him, he was just, he was so polite and kind. Like, like however nice you think he is, Double it. I remember when I was actually like standing there in the studio, uh, there were like members of the crew who were trying to get him like on set in time for, for cameras to start rolling. Cause you know, it's a live show. And even when they, they're like talking to him, like Michael, we gotta go, we gotta go. His attention is fully on me the entire time. That's just like, he makes you feel like you're the center of attention in a room with a ton of celebrity hosts. He's just, he was just such a good guy, you know? Oh, and he also gave me an autographed copy of his book, uh, Wake Up Happy. I should reread that, actually. I remember really liking it. It was a good book. Okay, what else did I do? What else did I do? I got a lot of calls in those weeks following the video. I did an interview with a Japanese morning show. I think it was called Fuji TV? Or, yeah, Fuji TV. I did it a long, long time ago. If I can find the like news segment of it, like video of it, I'll put it in like, I'll put it in the description below. What else did I do? I did an interview for MTV News over the phone. Uh, I remember the video was featured on ESPN, uh, it was on Tosh.0, it was on Ridiculousness, a couple of other shows. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. What else? I remember, it was, I remember reading a bunch of articles about it too. What was, what was the other thing? What was the other thing? I made a list. Am I gonna have to check my list? No. I was also asked to do an audition video for America's Got Talent by uh, one of their producers. I remember actually sending in a video and I never actually heard back from anybody. Once again, no hard feelings. I remember back then that a lot of coverage of it really leaned in on the, uh, on the whole on the whole white nerd with glasses versus the cool black kids aspect of it, which Honestly, it felt a little weird at the time. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not gonna contest the nerd accusations here. New band name called it. <laughs> I mean, I was wearing a glow-in-the-dark Albert Einstein shirt at the time. I mean, come on. If that doesn't scream, I'm a nerd, nothing does. But the thing is, this wasn't a David versus Goliath kind of situation. You know what I mean? I was already a pretty well-known dancer in the school. I was part of the school's dance company. I'd taken hip hop and jazz classes outside of school. I was a good dancer and I think a decent portion of my classmates knew it. I actually remember as the other students were, like in the video, as the other students were clapping out a beat, I was actually kind of nervous that Ty or Josh were gonna we're gonna absolutely smoke me in front of all of my classmates. Cause the thing is, I'd never seen either of them dance before. They'd seen me perform in like 
some performances for school, but I never, I didn't know how good they were. They knew what they were up against. I didn't know what I was up against. I'm, a, I'm lucky I came out on top on that. Uh, one of the funniest parts was that complete strangers would recognize me all the time asking, hey, are you that guy in the dance meme? And this happened all the time. I get asked about it at the mall, going grocery shopping, at the library, at the beach one time. It was everywhere, everywhere. Even when I went to college, I still got people asking for selfies and everything, which was, I'm not gonna lie, it felt really good. I worry about this all the time a little bit though, because I really hope that kind of recognition doesn't really go to my head. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I don't want to be just, I don't want to be that guy who acts like he's hot shit because one cool thing happened to him in high school, you know? Damn, am I doing that just by virtue of making this video? By making this video, am I trying to like soak up the dregs of that little bit of internet fame? Like, what does that say about me that I'm- You know what, I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole. I'm gonna. Stay focused. And honestly, it happened so long ago that at this point, it almost feels like it happened to someone else. And whenever someone brings it up in person or online these days, I try to act like it's, I try to play it cool. I try to play it casually. I try to act like this isn't a real thing that happened. It's just a funny thing that happened. Like I try not to, I don't want to be that guy about it. You know what I mean? Does that make, does that make sense? Looking back, I really wish I kind of stayed more in contact, stayed more in touch with everybody in that video. I haven't really kept in contact with Tim or Josh, but I, I stayed really good friends with Tajir. Uh, he's the uh, he's the guy in the video who, <coughs> who pretty much tackled me with a hug right after I did the big move. He's one of my best friends and he is, he's, I'm not exaggerating, he's literally one of the best people in the world. And that is an objective fact and I will fight you if you disagree. Anyway, moving on. The best thing to come out of all this actually came a few years after it happened. What happened was I got to do this commercial for Schick Razors. In a short time, you decided what kind of man I am. Stuck a label on me. But that's not for you to decide. This is the man I am. It takes a man to be yourself. It takes the right razor to express it. Schick HydroSense. So now a lot of the internet has seen me shirtless. Still deciding whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Okay, so how did this start? In, what was it, May? Yeah, I think, yeah, May. In May of 2018, I got an email inquiring about a commercial opportunity. It literally just said commercial opportunity in the email, in the subject heading. And I kind of brushed it off at first because I get spam emails all the time and I really didn't think it meant, I didn't think it meant, you know, that kind of commercial opportunity. And also I was, I was in the middle of my sophomore year of college and you know, I had finals to worry about at the time. So after finals wrap up, I revisit that inquiry and I saw that they wanted to shoot a commercial, an actual commercial with me starring in the commercial, which you know, I really had to, I got whiplash from that. Uh, the production company wanted to fly me out to Vancouver to shoot it and uh, they had a whole like storyboard set up for it. They even expedited getting my passport since it was the first time I've been out of the US. And they paid for everything. I, I got first class seats on the plane, we got a five star hotel, all of it, the whole shebang. It was wonderful really because me and my mother, we got to spend, we got to enjoy a few days in Vancouver, which I never would have gone, to, I never would have gone to that city if they hadn't brought me out there. And I love Vancouver, Vancouver is beautiful. And that trip was just, just, absolutely lovely. So actually shooting the commercial was, it was a long day. I remember I was in those red shorts in the video, in the in the commercial, I was in those red shorts for like eight hours in this, it was this big arena that the production company rented for the shoot. And they had these three like super authentic looking like bathroom sets built. They were just, they're just sitting right there in the middle of this big massive space. And I spent most of that day uh, standing on that tiled bathroom set. And you know, I do some fake shaving, I deliver my lines as best I could. I took notes from the director and we would, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd reset and we'd do it all over again. I must have had that shaving cream like reapplied like 50 times that day. Like I remember my face felt so 
felt so raw by the end of it. I mean, they had me use a fake razor, like a dulled razor, in the razor that I'm holding in the commercial. So, you know, I wouldn't like grate my skin that much, but still, I kind of, I needed a break after all of that. Like just having that on your face over and reapply to your face over and over and over again. And when, when you're autistic like I am and you have like a little bit of a touch sensitivity and having that on your face, it's not always the best. But I soldiered on and I got through it. And so yeah, eventually I delivered enough lines that they really, really liked and they were happy with it. And they sprung a surprise on me. They brought out a mobile speaker and they asked me to like improv some dance moves for them. I remember, what was the song? Uh, I, they, they let me pick the music. What was the song I chose? Uh, it was Give Life Back to Music by Daft Punk. I love Daft Punk. I Fucking love Daft Punk. R.I.P. Daft Punk. Gone too soon. So I do some dancing for a couple of minutes and uh, they picked out a section of the moves that I did that they liked and that ended up in the commercial. And when it all wrapped up, the whole cast and crew, we uh, we enjoyed some catered food and we, uh, I remember we kicked around a soccer ball that someone brought, which was a lot of fun. Oh, I also forgot that this, we shot this, it was, uh, during one of the World Cups. I can't remember who won that year. The World Cup was playing and people were excited about it. And a few weeks after I got home from Vancouver, uh, the production company also had me come to a recording studio to do, uh, you know, to dub over the lines that I that I did for the original shoot. It was this whole thing. They had me in a soundproof booth. I had, that, I had a big headset. I'd say my lines into the mic. They'd like feed me through the through the uh, headphones like the exact audio of what I did in the shoot, and I had to match like the cadence, the pitch, the tempo for all the takes that they wanted me to dub. And it was it was a cool experience, honestly. I really really liked it. It was a lot of fun. And later on in August of yeah 2018, it was the day I moved into my dorm for my junior year of college. The finished commercial was finally released. The thing is, I couldn't um, I couldn't talk about it to very many people because I signed I signed an NDA that was active up until the commercial went public, and it was one of the first things that I shared with my brand new roommate who I just met in person that day, and he was just blown away by it, you know. And needless to say, that kicked our friendship off to a great start. And Kish is still one of my best friends. I love you, man. I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. On a uh, on a more sober note, I uh, do need to mention something else. There were two other men who Schick asked to be in this commercial series. All three of us were from videos that you know had gone viral on the internet, and they wanted to make a make a sort of theme out of it. And one of them was a beatboxer. I think his name uh, his name is Zuna, and uh, I was very impressed by what he could do. If you want to see the commercial he's in, I'll put I'll. I'll either put it in an info card on this video or I'll put in a link in the description below. And the other was a man named Willie Spence. He was a he was a singer who actually performed for American Idol back in 2021 and uh, he made second place that year. I remember in the short time that I knew him how how really he, how nice he was and I just how jaw-droppingly humble the man was. Just he unfortunately died in October 2022. And I, uh, I really wish I, I really wish I kept in touch with him. I'm sorry to end. I'm sorry to end it on that note. But I just, I feel like, I feel like this video would be incomplete if I didn't talk about him because even though I knew him for su for such a short time, I feel like he was a bright spot in my life, and so I wanted to mention him. So yeah, that's it. That's the story of how a random dance off in my high school cafeteria led to brief internet fame and a commercial. And every now and then it crops up again on social media, it crops up on Reddit or Instagram or Tumblr, and uh, I get to read some really interesting comments about it. Uh, people have some really funny things to say sometimes. And uh, you know, maybe I'll get to read some even more interesting comments now that people know how it happened, now that people know the full story. It's funny how life works out sometimes, you know? So anyway, I hope you, uh, I hope you enjoyed that little anecdote of mine. Uh, if you want to see more of me, if you like movies, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel here. I gotta plug that. You know the whole spiel. Like, comment, subscribe, share, all that. Every little bit helps, and I really do appreciate each and every single one. And uh, if you want to take our relationship to the next level, you can uh, please consider joining my Patreon. I got a link for that in the description below. So, uh, yeah. Thank you again for joining me. 
If you want to check out more of my videos, I'll see you soon. And uh, if not, this has been uh, this has been fun. And thank you for your time. Bye, guys. Look, see? It's a glow-in-the-dark Albert Einstein shirt.